Biocultural diversity is the concept that an inherent and profoundly intertwined link exists between cultural and linguistic diversity and species richness. Recognition of this phenomenon began when researchers first noticed that the most biodiverse regions of the Earth, most notably the rainforests of Amazonia, equatorial Africa, and the East Asia Pacific, also harbor the world's highest numbers of indigenous peoples and languages. Scientists have reached consensus that cultural and biological diversities are mutually reinforcing. It seems likely that dense and varied landscapes give rise to equally varied indigenous populations, who in turn implement management practices that protect and enhance a region's biodiversity. Yet we need not travel to a rainforest for evidence of biocultural diversity. In fact, most inhabitants of the American Southeast may not realize that a fascinating example once flourished in their own backyards. Around 5,000 years ago, in the present-day United States, several changes took place that transformed the Southeast from a land characterized by oak, hickory, and pine trees to one dominated by a single species, Pinus palustris, the longleaf pine. First responsible for this shift was a change in climate. Longleaf pine came to prominence during the Holocene epoch, or the interglacial period following the Earth's most recent ice age, when a rise in temperatures caused new weather patterns. The most important result of these new patterns was an increase in thunderstorms in the southeast, which developed as hot tropical air masses moved north across the coast. These frequent summer storms spawned a great deal of lightning, which in turn caused wildfires that burned at low intensities across great swaths of land. As wildfire developed into a regular disturbance, the species most susceptible to frequent fire became replaced by fire-tolerant species. The longleaf pine, which is resistant to low-intensity fire through each stage of its life, was foremost among these species. Yet researchers believe that lightning alone may not have been consistent enough to ensure the metamorphosis of an area stretching from Virginia to Florida and as far west as Texas. So how did the American Southeast become a vast mosaic of longleaf landscapes? The answer lies in a practice that was observed by the very earliest European visitors to the region, which has been supported by studies of fire rings and trees and charcoal particle analysis. Though most are now extinct, more than a hundred American Indian tribes and confederacies once inhabited the American th Southeast. These tribes routinely set fire to the landscapes in which they hunted, farmed, and foraged. Regular burning was an invaluable tool used for dozens of purposes by different tribes. Numerous colonial accounts attest to American Indians' use of fire to direct deer, bison, and other game species into hunting traps. The manipulation of fire aided hunting, foraging, traveling, and settlement by reducing dense undergrowth, discouraging the proliferation of vermin, preventing future high-intensity fires, and encouraging the growth and production of valuable plants. The result of this careful and frequent manipulation was a mosaic of anthropogenic landscape corridors, matrices, and patches many dominated by longleaf pine across the southeast. Perhaps more interesting, however, is the more recent scientific revelation that longleaf pine forests are among the most biodiverse landscapes in the entire world. Longleaf ecosystems are home to many of the south's endemic birds, reptiles, and plants, including the red cockaded woodpecker, the gopher tortoise, the indigo snake, the carnivorous pitcher plant, and countless, countless others. That American Indian tribes manipulated their environments to sustain the longleaf and biodiversity for thousands of years comes as no surprise when viewed through the lens of biocultural diversity. By the same token, it is no coincidence that both cultural and biological diversity suffered unfathomable devastation in the centuries following colonial contact. Small tribes went extinct, while larger ones were ravaged by disease, war, and displacement. With the Native Americans' departed ecological understanding and appreciation of the longleaf pine forests, over the resulting centuries, the entire Southeast was leveled by an insatiable greed for timber and naval stores. 
Longleaf pine forests have been reduced to just 3% of their original range. Unfortunately, the story of the American Southeast is not unusual. Researchers have found that the same forces that threaten biological diversity also threaten linguistic diversity the world over.